Hello everyone and welcome back to the Professor Harris YouTube channel. Today we're getting into this. The basics and some of the basics of setting up for electronic news gathering. This is being recorded for one of my courses here at the university, but it will be widely available on my YouTube channel for both the people of the internet and other students interested in learning more about electronic news gathering. Let's get into it. All right, so I'd be remiss if I didn't start with all of this equipment. Yes, all of this equipment is the basics of your setup. This is everything you're going to need for your average everyday shoot. And this should all be in your car, relatively, so that you're prepared to go record. I'm going to have a list in the link or the description, a link of a list in the description of this video um, for my students so they can reference some of this equipment. And when they go to check it out of the lab or reserve it for themselves, um, they can do that. Yes, the laptop's included. You should bring your laptop so you can review footage on site and make sure it looks and sounds as good as you want it to. All right, so we've grabbed all of our equipment and we've shown up uh, at the place we're gonna film, we're gonna record, we're gonna report. What is the first thing we want to unpack and set up from this whole, this whole, this whole slosh of things that we see here? If you said the camera, you would be dead wrong. The first thing we wanna grab is our tripod. The tripod is the cornerstone of our production ex outside of the studio. The tripod's gonna make sure that we have a steady, clean, and consistent shot while working in the field. Tripods are made up of basic two parts. We have the tripod plate, which is this top part here. Tripod plates can be interchangeable um, on the top and attached to the tripod itself so we can mount different kinds of cameras and different kinds of plates to the tripod. This is the Yoda tripod here on campus. This is the one I recommend. It's got all of its knobs and handles and so on. And I'm gonna set it up for you real quick and give you an idea how this works. Some tripods here on campus come in bags, and that's just fine. First thing you're going to do is you're going to undo this little knob here so that we can release our handle. This handle allows us to film and control the camera freely. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down, though, just to get it out of the way of the legs so we can spread the legs of our tripod here. Now, super easy system where you can twist these left and right. Right is tightened, left is loosened. And when we flip these, rotate them left, we can see it becomes loose and then our tripod will start to rise. Now you're going to want to hover the tripod at a height where you want your camera to end up, where you actually want your camera to end up. For instance, here's, uh, here's a pretty good height. We want to film about shoulder level, maybe just below eye level, if we want to feel even with our, our uh, anchor. Okay, now that we've got our tripod at the correct height, we can start tightening down these little knobs. There we go. Now those are tight. Now, if you didn't know, on tripods, there is actually a level. This little level can tell us whether or not our tripod is level. If it's level, then we know that our camera is roughly level. Um, and the way that we adjust this is by loosening this knob down here to the right, or you know, unscrewing it to the left, lefty loosey, righty tighty, and then screwing it back in uh, once we find our desired set. Let me go ahead and play with this real quick see if I can't film and catch level at the same time. And I'm tighten it right there. Now, it might not look level to you, but that is 100% level to me. Now, you're saying, well, the whole thing's tilted. This thing, we can loosen this up and rock it back and forth. And I'll do that in a second. Um, all right, so now we've got our legs set at the height that we want. We've got our camera, our tripod set at the height we want. We can undo this knob, and we can see that the tripod has almost an auto leveling system. It's going to pull itself back to level. Now, if your tripod plate is on your tripod and it looks like the plate is too far back or too far forward, you're not level or you're not balancing your tripod or your camera on your tripod properly. There are buttons here. You can loosen this with that. And then you have a button here that you can press and you can start sliding. You don't even need to press it, but you can start sliding this back and forth. And if you walk up to a tripod, and it's like this, and or the camera is sliding back and forth on it, you know that you are not properly leveled. So you're gonna wanna get that roughly even, or mostly even, and then come over here and tighten that down. Now we know our tripod is uh, level, and that our camera, when we mount it to, won't just come crashing down. All right, basic things about the tripod. We have this little number system here. We can lower this to get an easier or smoother turn. If we tighten it, it will slow down the turn of this a lot. And that slow 
turning gives us a nice, beautiful pan when the camera is actually mounted, rather than loosing it and having a more free and fast pan, right? So we also have our tilt. We have a tilt control, which does much the same thing, except when we're for the uh, tilt, we're talking about up and down. So if I undo this knob here, we can move our camera pretty freely up and down. And if, again, we tighten that, then we'll get a slower tilt up and down. You can also just get good at operating the camera, and that would be nice too. This handle doesn't need to be in this configuration. This is kind of obstructive. What you can do is loosen this up, and you can really put this anywhere you feel most comfortable. I prefer the down and to the right. A lot of camera operators will do it this way, uh, especially if they have a camera mounted um, screen, right? If they have a camera mounted, my brain is fogging on this one. What's the name of this? It's not a viewfinder. What is it called? Oh man, I'm gonna get roasted in the comments section. That right there, where you have it mounted to the top of the camera, and it's actually a screen that you can see um, and use. All right, so tripod is set up. That was kind of a lengthy explanation, but we know our tripod's level. We have our, our tightness settings up. We have our lock set if the camera's not on. So we're gonna go ahead and lock the spinning and we're gonna lock the tilt. And now we're kind of ready to slap the camera on top. Well, before we grab the camera, actually, I wanted to make note of these locks. Make sure you're not forcibly tilting the camera down or panning left and right without ensuring that these locks have been loosened. You know they're loose when they're facing away from you and then it's more mobile and all that. If we want to, we can lock these down. But if these are locked and you're forcibly moving it around, you're ruining your tripod very quickly. All right, but before we grab our camera, I wanna make note of the different aspects of our plate here. We have this kind of arrowhead wedge shape here. This arrowhead web shape is found on the bottom of the camera and actually sits and slides into this while a little fork guy comes back here and catches the hover of that bolt. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the camera and put it up. Okay, if there was ever a time to not drop a camera, it would be now, especially as I'm doing this tutorial. But I'm gonna pull this up for you so you can see. There's that arrowhead shape I discussed, and then there's that little notch I discussed. Now, um, again, quick note about your tripod. Make sure that it's kind of level. If you're not sure, if it's not sure if it's level front to back, there's little metal parts here at the, the base where it actually slides in. You can check that too. But let's go ahead and take our camera, take our little arrowhead, line it up with our hole, slap it in there, and then check our little bolt here on the back. And we should hear a satisfying click when we push this in, and we'll know the camera's secured when we hear the click. You hear that? Did you hear the click? You should have heard the click. All right, that click, I hope it came up on my mic, that click tells us that we are, in fact, secured. Now, the camera's gonna feel a little bit front heavy because we're missing the battery. The battery adds a little bit of weight here. Now, before we move on to adding batteries and stuff, let's revisit this plate, because once you're done filming, you're gonna want to know how to take this off. The way to do that, is you're gonna pull this little red switch back, and then there's this tongue that you're gonna grab with your thumb, and that whole apparatus swivels out. I hope you can see that. And I can swivel this out, and then the camera just gently slides out. Now some will click, most won't, but you'll know that you're free once that starts to move. We're gonna bring this back in, set it up, look for our bolt on the back, click her back in, and we know she's secured. Now. If you thought you heard a click, but you're not sure, go ahead and feel free to pull back and forth on the uh, camera. Make sure you are in fact locked in. These suckers are heavy and they will fall over. Speaking of falling over, never, ever, ever start loosening these while the camera's on the tripod. Because guess what? It's just gonna fall down and you're gonna owe us a lot of money for this camera. Okay, uh, those points aside, we've got our camera now on our tripod. We've got our locks set. We can go ahead and unlock these and we'll start seeing the camera do all kinds of weird things like moving and I can go left and right. If I unlock this other one though, the whole camera is gonna fall forward and if our tripod plate's not properly secured, we're gonna lose the whole camera. So just make sure you're doing this right. Okay, I think we're ready to go ahead and put the battery on our camera and grab our batteries. We have three batteries and you can tell the percentage of the battery because it displays right there. I'm gonna grab this middle one because we're at 97%. And the way the batteries go on, 
We have a few cameras on campus that look very similar to this one, but those are the studio models. I just ordered plates to get battery adapters for them, but we have these three bolts on the bottom of the battery, and we have three holes here with little notches, one, two, three. These just line up as simply as that, and the same thing with the tripod. Get that nice, satisfying click, and you know that battery's on. Boom, now we have our camera with our battery on, on our tripod, and we're getting moving. We're, we're getting there. All right, so you might think that we want to boot the camera up and start playing with the settings, but instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our microphone. I'll show you how to do that now. I have brought out three different options when it comes to microphones, and we discussed all three of these in class. Um, if you weren't in class and you're someone on the internet, uh, it's worth noting that you're gonna need, you're definitely gonna need these microphones, and you're 100% going to need this cable. This cable is called an XLR cable. It has a male and a female end. If you check these out of the lab, make sure you grab one that has a male and a female end because the female end goes into the camera and the male end goes into the microphone. So we're gonna grab our cable here. We're gonna bring it over to our setup. And we're gonna come to the back of the camera and we have a few different audio channels we can put this into. We have channel one, channel two. We can pluck either of these off. It would be best to use channel one for consistency. And then we'll go ahead and take the male end of our XLR cable, making sure we have it in the right orientation with the third prong on the bottom. And we'll push this in until it clicks as well. There's a nice little click there. All right, so we've got our XLR cable in. We're gonna take the excess of this cable and we're gonna go ahead and run it over to our microphone. Routing our cable over here to the table, we have our different microphone options. In bag number one, we have your standard microphone, right? One that you're going to want to use on everyday reporter settings. Um, if you're outside, make sure you grab a windscreen or cover for this so that the wind doesn't interfere with any noise. We're going to go ahead and plug this in, though. We'll take the male end of this bad boy, again, ensuring that the correct sides are up and down, and we'll go ahead and stick that in until it clicks. Now we know our microphone is plugged in. That's your first miking option, and that should be roughly where my microphone is on my tie. I just touched it, so you might have heard some static, but I'll go ahead and turn this around. You're going to want to hold this at your chest about this far away from your face. Some microphones are a little more directional, so you might need to hold it out and direct it at a 45 degree angle to your face, but most microphones are going to allow you to hold it comfortably in front of yourself uh, on camera. All right, so that's the standard cardioid microphone. Go ahead and unplug this. All right, the next microphone we have is called a lavalier microphone. This is a smaller clip-on and wireless microphone that goes on your anchor or reporter. Um, there is a broadcast loop and a way that you put this onto a person. I'm going to go ahead and play that video now. If you're wearing a jacket, tie, or shirt, it's then super easy to position the mic. Just clip it to the edge of a suitable piece of clothing, like so. Remember to avoid a position where other clothing might rub against the mic when you move, as this will create a distracting sound in your video. To keep your video looking clean and professional, you may want to consider concealing the cable. You can simply tuck it out of sight under your jacket or run it inside your shirt. Pro sound engineers will use draper's tape to secure the cable against the inside of clothing. But another popular choice is gaff tape, anything to keep it out of sight. Here's another pro tip, the so-called broadcast loop. This will give you that professional look you'd have seen on TV. To do this, run the cable from the mic through the handle of the clip, then complete the circle over the top and into the slot on the edge of the clip. Now, when you clip this onto your jacket or your shirt, you will get that neat, clean profile. And welcome back. Um, so the lavalier microphone, or commonly called a lav, has two parts. Um, there's the transmitter and the receiver. That's what makes this system wireless. The transmitter has the microphone attached to it. The cabling runs through the shirt and this goes in the pocket often goes in the pocket. Sometimes it gets uses the clip and you put it on your belt. And then this sends a wireless signal over to our receiver. Now this isn't actually a receiver. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. But um, receivers sometimes will have an XLR direct. So just imagining that this comes right out, we could put this directly into the camera instead of having to connect to the cable on run. Um, some 
wireless cameras have, or some cameras, hello, by the way, some cameras have the system set up so you can just clip it to and hook it up and you're ready to go. So um, if you want to run with a wireless system, we do have one here on campus. Uh, another professor has taken them home. He's repairing one of them, but he has them all. So I wasn't able to show this properly. But just imagine here that we have either a cable to an adapter that goes to XLR or an XLR direct receiver. And this is your wireless lavalier microphone setup. This is a lot more flexible. This allows your anchor to talk with the camera on the go and move around and the cameraman to follow them at the same time. So that's the lavalier microphone. The last microphone here is a shotgun microphone. Shotgun microphones are highly directional microphones that are used when you're trying to capture audio that's coming from over there. I'd be remiss to forget to mention that there is a miniature microphone here on our camera already. And while you can use that, some of the microphones here on campus, I don't know why, inexplicably just start peaking. So just forget that's on there and we're gonna focus down here on this one. So this is something you could mount up there in that exact same spot. You could swap the XLR cable here. Um, but these mics, sometimes you'll see them set up, uh, let's say for uh, meetings and maybe there's like 60 microphones lined up and someone's trying to get audio from a person who's sitting back like six or seven feet in their chair, this would be the microphone used. Additionally, we could take mic a microphone like this and we could slap it on something called a boom pole. So this is a boom pole, the microphone gets clicked right into there, and then an operator manually holds this pole, the cable again running into the back of the camera, holds this pole in the area out of shot, but on this pole, um, to get audio from either an anchor or someone else. Um, you can use this, uh, it's not, it's very unrecommended, don't, don't hold this, don't ever hold this and think you're gonna use this as like a speaking mic, any kind of hand noise on a microphone like this is gonna be picked up and you're gonna hear all kinds of crackling. Similar to the boom pole, you don't wanna be, sh you don't wanna have a shifty boom pole operator, you're gonna hear a lot of noise. So again, this would get mounted up there, cable would run into the back of your camera and you'd be all set up. Now one thing you should keep in mind is that these do run off batteries, they are not phantom powered. I'll explain what phantom powered means in a second, but these do have batteries, so you'll have to unscrew this center part and make sure you've got a fresh battery in your uh, shotgun mic before you go out and start filming. So that is your boom mic. So in summary, if you're going to do a longer form kind of sit down, you can hook up multiple lavalier mics to your interview guest or whatever it may be, depending on how patient the person is, you're gonna wanna use the lavalier microphone. Good audio quality. If you're a uh, reporter on field, in the field, uh, you're getting the general news, you're setting up for the camera just to shoot in front of the courthouse and X, Y, and Z, you're gonna wanna grab this cardioid microphone. And if you're doing a uh, setup where you're trying to capture audio from someone who's speaking, who's important, and or you're trying to get, uh, you could, there, there are a number of use cases for the shotgun microphone, but they, they are more, more focused on capturing audio that's a little bit further away. So you could use this for your production, but if you're just gonna have a reporter standing in front of the camera, you're typically gonna wanna stick to the cardioid. So I hope that clears some things up. Um, Shotgun mic has its place in more film production when you're trying to shoot a scene. You've got characters, multiple characters talking, and you might want to hold it just above and out of angle so that we can yeah, capture the audio from uh, those people. All right, I hope that's not too confusing. If you have any questions, feel free to just chuck them in the comment section below. All right, so those are microphones. Let's switch back now to this microphone, plug it in, and set it up with our camera and see how that all looks on the interface. Quick point I'd like to make, obviously wireless versions of this microphone exist and they're much more flexible. This isn't really the setup you'd want to use if you were chasing someone down the street and like, what's your comment on the matter? What's your comment on the matter? Um, that's not really what this is for. This microphone's more for the reporter standing and giving their story. Okay, we got our microphone plugged into the back of our camera. Again, we're in channel one, very important to note. Um, there's also this little switch here if it'll focus, it says line and mic. Make There's two little mic settings here. You can see it says line, there's one, and then it says mic, one, two. And all the way to the right, it says 48 V on. Uh, come on camera, 48 volts on. That's because this microphone that we're using is and uses phantom power. Phantom power means that there's no battery in the actual microphone and that an electrical signal can be sent through the XLR cable the microphone to make it work. So if you're working with 
this microphone or microphones that don't have batteries, make sure you turn on that phantom power by switching that all the way to the right. All right, so microphone set up, boom, everything's good. Are we ready to turn the camera on yet? We could, or we could bounce over to lighting, but for now, let's go ahead and just turn our camera on. She's booting up. There she is. The little focus just shifted, and we can see already, as I'm speaking, that microphone right there is picking up my voice, and we're seeing audio levels come up. Now, you're at a basic point. You're still setting this up, and you're not seeing those levels. So now you're kind of panicking. You're saying, oh, my mic's plugged in. I've got it set over to 48 volts. I'm not seeing any channel. I'm not seeing any channel volume. Um, that's probably because these settings here may be incorrect. So we're going to go ahead and pull and flip this bad boy down. And don't be overwhelmed by this. I'm going to walk you through it slowly. So this little fader here, this little knob, allows us to increase and decrease the amount of volume that's actually getting to the microphone and the sensitivity, so to speak. So as I crank this up, we can see my volume levels gets higher and higher and higher until it starts to peak, and that's not very good for everybody. So we'll leave that right around mid-range, and we'll know that that volume level is good because we see these two little dots just below minus 10 decibels. Congratulations, you just learned that between minus 20 and minus 10, when your audio is peaking, you're at a pretty good volume. All right, so that's good to know. Um, and our audio channels, down here come on camera go ahead and get let me try and get closer see if it come on switch lenses whatever this is fine um we have channel one audio we can ignore these other channels by setting them either to rear or wireless i would go ahead and set them all to wireless because we have no intention of using any of these channels we just want to make sure that channel one for ourselves is set to rear if it's set to front it's going to use the microphone on the front and I don't know why it does that. I think the microphone's broken somehow. There's some kind of feedback loop going. But we're just going to leave this set to rear. Channel 1 to rear. Channel 2, 3, and 4 down to wireless. All right. So that's all set there. We have our audio audio select. That's set to manual right now. That's fine. Um, and we can leave channel 2 either down to zero. Or if we had a second microphone we were trying to get audio, we could plug a second XLR with a second mic into channel 2. Come over here set that to rear and then we could turn up our channel 2 level and then we'd be getting levels on channel 1 and channel 2. Again, I don't have a microphone plugged in but that's one way we can do that. All right, now um, over here you have your monitor. This, These are your monitor channels. These are the audio channels that are coming through and because you can record multiple channels at the same time, um, this is a little speaker where you'll stick your eye through that hole and then you'll listen back to what you heard you're going to want to make sure that that's set to either 1-3 or mix. Mix is going to give you all different kinds of audio that you've recorded on all separate channels. Channel 1, because we're simply using Channel 1 for our anchor reporter news stories here, is just fine. Uh, and then you have a volume control for your monitor. And right now, this is set rather high. so We can turn that down. But that's kind of irrelevant. So why is that irrelevant? That's irrelevant because we're going to want to actually put headphones into this camera to make sure that our audio levels are good. Because while you can trust this pretty nicely and uh, it, that looks good on paper, you don't necessarily want to trust the audio when you do the playback um, through the viewfinder because this can be deceiving. This might not tell you everything you need to know, especially because this has its own volume control here. So we'll go ahead and plug some headphones into our camera. The headphone slot is on the very outside. And we know that's a headphone slot because it says earphone right here, so we'll go ahead and get that plugged in. Pro tip, if you actually set this arm up properly, you can hang your headphones on it. All right, some headphones have like a USB-C and your standard aux. Go ahead and just flip this bad boy open. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm doing it, and we're just gonna stick that bad boy in there. All right, so now we should be hearing things through our headset. If you're not hearing things through your headset, make sure that there's not a volume adjuster on the actual middle piece because that happens to people sometimes. I see the students found that mistake and they've taped it so that that doesn't happen anymore. All right, I got my headset on and I've got my microphone in hand. And as I speak into my microphone, I can see I'm peaking quite a bit, but I know that I have good audio because I can hear it in the headset and I know 
that I can hear my anchor. And that's all good and dandy. All right, so we've got our microphone set up. We've got our cameraman with his headphones on, and he is verifying that we are getting cons consistent and constant audio. If you're seeing levels here, but you're not hearing them, you might not have the jacket all the way. Or if you're seeing levels here and you're not hearing them, the volume might be down. Or if you're seeing volume here and you're not hearing it, you might have a faulty cable or this, you know, again, isn't pushed in all the way. So just keep those things in mind. Um, you're listening for warbles. You're listening for cracks. You're listening for inconsistencies. Anything that's screwy, you're going to need to come back, get something else, get maybe a new headset or something. But always make sure that your audio is working. All right. So we've got it all set up. Sweet. Sort of. Sort of. Only sort of. There are a few camera side things that we need to do. And those camera side things technically come after we've got our lighting set up. Um, so depending on where and when you're filming, you may or may not need light. Um, if you're filming outside on a bright day, how do I say this? News isn't hyper particular about lighting. The big thing is that we just want to see the reporter. Um, so basic lighting is good enough. If you're, if it's kind of like dusk and the sun's starting to set and you want to film, maybe you set up one uh, light. If it's like pitch blackout, you might need two. But a lot of the times, one big LED light will get you taken care of. So before we start playing with camera settings, let's go ahead and bounce over to our light kit that's down here on the floor. And we'll start setting that up. We'll set up at least one light, and I'll show you kind of how that looks. Um, because it's a repeating pattern for both. One thing to note is that we have two different LED kits here on campus. And the LED kit that has the soft case um, is the one that has batteries that are compatible with both the camera and the lights. So we have a lighting kit, and you can use that lighting kit, but just be aware that you are going to need an AC power cable to make those lights work. We don't have the battery adapters for them yet. So Keep that in mind. Make sure you take this kit out and not any others. Okay, so I've kind of repositioned some things. I've got my camera. It's pointed there at my fictitious human being that's holding. I got my cables out of the way, so I'm not going to be tripping over them. And now I'm going to start setting up my light panel kit. So do we start with the light when we're setting up our lights? The answer is no. We always start with the stand, the light stand. This is a light stand. This is a pretty generic one, um, but it works pretty well. And the way we start with setting up our light stands is we always start by unscrewing the bottom most and then opening this up while sliding this top part down. So I'm going to open her up. Let me get this a little looser. And get her nice and wide. Now, people ask me all the time, do I set this up so that the center touches the ground or whatnot? The answer is you set this up because you'll set this up in a variety of terrains, but you're going to set this up in a way that it's as sturdy as possible. If you're on flat ground, that means extending this until this area is roughly level um, from bar to bar. That's the way I like to do it at least, and I've seen other professionals do it the same way. So we've got a nice wide stance here as a base, and we know, let me move my light back a little bit, we know that this isn't necessarily going to fall over. Now we'll loosen these from bottom to top, because if you go top to bottom, it gets a little weird. And we're going to set this. Don't ever extend it all the way. You want to extend it um, to the end and then back a little bit. You don't want to leave it on the furthest extension possible. And I'm going to loosen this bad boy. And we're going to set this light up so that the light's at or just above head height. Because we want the light, the light's going to sit on it. It's going to sit a little bit higher. But we're going to set that light up to point down because a light from the top down at an angle feels like sunlight. It feels a little more natural. I'm going to extend this just a little bit more. There we go. All right. So make sure all our locks are nice and tight. And then we'll go ahead and pull out our light panel. So now we've got our light panel. Sorry for the jump cut. But we've got our light panel. We've got it flat on a flat surface. Now we need to make some decisions about how we're going to wire this because we can see we have two cables here. Well. This cable here is connected to this adapter, which allows us to use these batteries here on this light kit. So that means we're going to want to take this power cable, because it's plugged into our thing here, and plug it in up here where we actually get power to our light panel. Now, we hear a nice little click. That means we're in. We're good. This other cable is 
for AC power. So when we plug in on this side, when we take a power cable, essentially like that one, but not quite that, there's a, a correct cable, it's in the bag. When we plug in here, that comes from this side and we can plug it in that way. So silver means we're on cable power, black means we're on battery power. And battery power is where we wanna be. So now we'll take our battery and we'll go ahead and set it on. Same way we did our camera, where we line up our little nubs, set it there and pull it down. We get a nice satisfying click. Now, the camera, or not the camera, do is the light panel is now ready to be taken and mounted on. So I'll be right back. Now, you can put the battery on this um, after you put it up here. Uh, there's no major preference for me one way or the other. Um, just know that this is a little heavier, so you're going to be holding it up. So this comes and sits down on the top, and then we have this knob that we can turn. So go ahead and turn that until that's nice and tight. We know that our light is nice and secure. Now, one thing to note about our stand is that these stands, when you put a big heavy light with a big battery on top, you can see it's already swaying. Um, we have heavier duty stands if you're interested in using one of those, but this one will get you along just fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. If I click this power button on the right side, we can see we turn on and now we're getting light cast it up and away. I'll go ahead and pick this up. And we can see our light is now shining on our person. Now, if we were outside, we have all this nice orange light coming in, and then we have this bluish tint. Let's come over here and look at this panel, and I'll discuss some of these buttons and knobs and how they work. So I'm just going to plug this, this. These are the ones that are only powered AC, but I'm just going to set this up so it looks similar to what's up there. So first we have our Kelvin scale ad adjuster. This allows us to adjust for things like uh, daylight, dusk, dawn. It makes essentially the light more orange or more blue or more white. Raw daylight is like 56, so you're going to get uh, 5,600 Kelvin, uh, between 5,000 and 5,600 Kelvin. So that's going to be like your true white. And then as you get lower, you'll get into more orange and then blues in there somewhere too, probably on some of the lower settings. I could be completely wrong about that, but um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to match the light. You're trying to match the light that exists already in your setting. And if there is no light, then you should adjust your light to be less of a blue like this is and more of a comfortable, not quite blue, but not quite orange, just natural, nor normal looking. So I'll go ahead and make those adjustments on this light, adjusting my little Kelvin scale, and we'll get this all set up nice and right. And there we go. Now we have a much warmer more natural looking light that matches this set. We can even see that the light is a little warmer. It was more blue before. Okay, so um, it's as simple as that. We've also got our brightness adjuster. So if I want to turn this down or turn this up, we can see how that would affect our talent if they were sitting over there. But that's really how simple it is to set up these lights. Um, you just kind of put the batteries in, put them on the stand, and you're ready to go. Now. One thing to note is that your light should be at about a 45 degree angle from your talent. So go ahead and move this. If these feel unlevel, we have sandbags. I'll go ahead and grab one. And you can check out these sandbags to ensure that your light doesn't fall over. That's what these are for. Some people choke them up real high. Some people choke them lower. Right there is about good. But this is going to ensure that if the wind blows really hard, it doesn't take over our light. Keep that in mind on a windy day. I mean, you can check these out of our lab. We do have these. All right, so our light's set up at our 45-degree angle. Let's uh, back it up. We'll give a perspective as to what this looks like from the talent. So if I pull out here a little bit, you can see we're looking kind of straight and that that light is just off of us. It could probably go a little bit more to the right, but I'm going to keep it a little closer to the camera just for the sake of this demonstration. One last little thing to note is that, unfortunately, I've discovered that the students have snapped off a knob or two from the light panels. That makes it a lot more difficult to make adjustments to them. Um, for instance, we're missing this one, our little Kelvin scale adjuster. So I had to use a screwdriver, a little screwdriver bit. I stuck it in there and I turned it very gently. Um, and you might have to do that for the time being. I apologize that that's the way that it is. It's definitely not supposed to be that way and I'll get them repaired this summer. So expect that. Um, you can alternatively check out the other light kit that's in the hard case, but again, remember you'll have to use the power cable. So you have to plug in the power cable, 
uh, to the side, and then then you can wire it up and make sure you're good to go. But these will be on battery power too as well soon. So we have an adapter for that. We'll install that. Anyway, all side notes. All right, so we got our camera. We got our light. We got our guy set up. He's practicing his stuff. What's the next step, right? So we have we have our mic. We got our camera. We got our light. Everything set up the way it needs to be. The next thing we need to do is adjust the settings on the actual camera um, to make sure that the picture looks as good as possible. So we'll go ahead and do that now. It's like you thought, we're just going to start over and make sure that our camera is set up front to back. So you walk up to the camera, uh, and the intern Billy Joe shut it off. I don't know why he did that. So we'll go ahead and flip the power switch to turn it back on. It's going to boot up here. Beautiful, very nice. Um, while it's booting up, we can double check that our XLR cable is still in channel one, that our mic is still way over to the right and getting plus 48 volts of electricity to power it, that our headphone cable is still in, that our headphones are still on the rack, um, power's on. All right, so now we jump behind the viewfinder and we look in there and we go, why is it dark? Why is it dark? What's going on? Oh, the lens cap is on. So we'll take the lens cap off. Ta-da. Let there be light. Now we see. All right. Oh, and guess what? Guess where the lens cap goes? That's right. It goes straight to the camera bag from which it came. Otherwise, it will be lost, and you will be fired from your job. All right. So lens cap's back in the bag where it belongs. Now, let's run through the camera. Let's run through the basics of the camera. We've got our mic set up. Um, we've got our viewfinder. Why do we need a viewfinder? Well, we've got this option where we can push this button and flip this up so that we don't use it. What that is actually is a mirror. The real viewfinder is like kind of over here. So we could stand horizontal to the camera and still see what's going on this way. Or we could stand behind the camera and see what's going on there. Or if it's super bright out, we can look through the viewfinder and eliminate all sunlight and look at the greasy screen in there and make sure that our shot looks good. So that's our viewfinder. That's how our viewfinder works. Um, we've got some buttons and features. I'll come back to them. But as we're working through the essentials of the camera, I want to bring you around to this side because this side has the grip. This grip, we can control a bunch of functions of the camera just here alone. What happens if you're holding the camera on your shoulder is you're going to be using this primarily. But you will use this too if you're, you know, if you've got it on the tripod, that's fine as well. Let me stop talking, but these are our triggers. These triggers allow us to zoom in and out, in and out. Um, it doesn't say in and out, though. It says widen, tighten. If we do this way, it's going to tighten our shot. So if I flip over here to the viewfinder, we can see if I go tighten, we'll zoom in. If I go widen, we'll zoom out. Right? I hope you can see that. And that's me playing with these two triggers. Next, we have RET. This is so we can review footage after we've shot it. It's going to show us the most recent clip we just shot and immediately start playing it right here in our viewfinder. But that's irrelevant because we don't know where the record button is. This is the record button. You'd press this with your thumb. Your hand would run up and through this. You have a nice grip on it, and you would press that record button. Additionally, when you're actually shooting in the field, you're also going to press that record button. This is how you're going to activate or start the recording. Now. What should a good camera operator do when they walk up to the camera after walking away from it for a while? They should check if they're level. Look, our tripod has shifted slightly. That means we need to unscrew this doodad and balance this with the camera on top. This can be done. It should be done very carefully. I'm going to do it right now just um, so that this is nice and square and even. So you'll have to imagine me doing this. So let me do that real quick, and then we'll jump back. OK, so camera's back to level. Very good. Um, we understand these features. We understand how to zoom in and out. We understand how to record, how to review footage we just shot. Um, what else do we need to learn how to do on this camera? Well, there's not much more. Um, I taught you a little bit earlier about how these little monitors and the playback works. Let's switch into making sure our shot actually looks good. So there are some essentials to making your shot look good. And those essentials are and always do start with what's called white balancing the camera. If you don't white balance the camera, your shot will look wrong. For instance, this shot looks rather blue. The camera, this 
phone I'm using is adjusting it. If I flip this switch, you can see it's changing from like this blue to an orange. And that switch here is our white balance. We have three settings. We have A, B, and preset. Um, you're going to want to leave it on either A or B. Either's fine. Um, we're going to leave it on B for the sake of this demonstration. But we want to white balance the camera. The way that you white balance a camera is you're telling essentially the sensor in the camera what true white looks like. So you're going to need something that is truly white. And I found this convenient whiteboard. We have other white objects. You can use pieces of paper or things like that. But no matter what, you're going to have, after setting up your light, you're going to have your anchor hold something that's truly white. Your camera operator is going to come over here. He's going to zoom in all the way. Let me undo my locks here real quick and adjust my camera so that I'm ready to zoom in. There we go. And I'm going to zoom in to my white object as much as possible till it fills the entirety of the screen. Now that it's filling the entirety of the screen, um, I'm going to make sure I'm set to either A or B again under my white balance, ATW, auto white balance. And then we're going to come around to this and we see the auto white balance switch. We have white and black. We're going to flip up while, again, making sure that we're filling our whole screen. And this is going to white balance the camera. White balancing. And it should have completed. Yep, white balance complete. So now that white board appears the way it's supposed to. It looks a little blue on my camera, but just ignore that. Trust me, it looks proper. Uh, and now, now we've white balanced, we're going to want to black balance. And we'll black balance by flipping this down. When we flip this down, it's going to like close inside there, and it's going to start registering and computing what true black looks like. And it's going to come back in a sec, and boom. Now we've properly calibrated what true white looks like and what true black looks like on the camera. So we're essentially just about ready to film. But something we should note is that we have these things called ND filters. That's this knob here. If I rotate this, this is going to put this kind of darkening or lightening effect onto my shot. And if you're not paying attention, you can accidentally rotate that to something you're not actually looking for. Now, this rotates from one clear up to four, one, two, three, four. And you're going to want to be aware of which one you're on. If it's like a super incredibly bright day, you'll want to use four, which is 164th ND. And that's going to darken this up quite a bit so that you can get proper levels and so on and so forth. Um, if it's like a mildly dark day or a mildly bright day, you're just going to adjust this. And these different little flippy guys allow us to change for darker and brighter days outside. I hope that all makes sense. But essentially, if it's super bright out, you'll probably want it on three or four. If it's averagely bright out, like it is here in the studio, because I've made some controls condition, controlled conditions, that's not super bright. I'm going to leave it on one, right? So we're make sure all white balanced and black balanced and ready to go. OK, so our shot looks good just about. We're not quite framed properly, though. So we'll want to zoom out. Aha, no, we won't. Because what we want to do, actually, is zoom in all the way and get our focus. The way that you get your focus with this camera, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm zooming in and out with my fingers over here. If that's not obvious. You zoom in and out. You'll zoom in all the way. And then we're going to adjust this very large ring here. This is called our focus. And if we look in here, eh, at the same time, we can see when and where our focus catches. This is kind of hard to do. And because that's a solid white object, it's not easy to see. So I'm going to swap our solid white object out for some cabling. Cabling is going to give us a little more definition to look at. So let's zoom in or zoom out here a little bit till we see our cabling. Let me undo the lock and tilt this camera down a tad. There we go. I'm going to zoom in again. And when you're getting your focus, you want to zoom in on the anchor's face all the way. We want to see every little pore in their face. Like, this is wildly out of focus. We're going to slide this until we get in focus. We can see a point when it gets sharp and a point where it gets blurry, and we can pass right by it. So you're just ever so slightly adjusting this ring until that looks perfectly clear is the objective. So now we have our cables perfectly clear, and that will stay perfectly in focus when we zoom out. So now we'll zoom out all the way, 
And if we zoom out to our, you know, our mid shot, our close up, our anchor is going to look properly in focus. So again, getting your focus requires zooming in all the way and then adjusting the ring to focus. I just tapped it, adjusting the ring until it's focused. So that's how you get your focus. So we've white balanced, black balanced. We've set our focus. Everything looks good on our viewfinder. We're hearing audio from our microphone. We're all set up to press record. No, we're not, because we have to put an SD card into this camera. There is no SD card. The SD card slot is here. You'll slide this open, and you have these big cards. You can eject them by pressing these buttons. You don't need to do that. What we need to do, though, is we need to come over here, and we need to snag our little SD card. Now, we have different SD cards here on campus. Uh, general rule of thumb um, when we're shooting in HD and 4K is you're going to want an Extreme Pro or an SD card that can take high megabytes per second. For instance, this one takes 170 megabytes per second. And we're going to go ahead and slide this in, making sure that this tiny little gray tab right there is flipped up. If that's flipped down, it won't allow you to record media to the card. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and slide this in. I'm trying to do it to the camera. All right, and then we'll press it and just push it in. Don't push too hard. Just push till it clicks, and then you're good. Your card is in. It's being read. It's recognized, and that's in slot A. You're going to need to remember slot A and slot B going forward. Now we're going to come around to the camera side settings, and we're going to flip down this panel, which is adjacent to our audio panel. This is where we find the menu, the thumbnail. Thumbnail is where you can play back and review footage that you've shot prior. Um, but let's go ahead and pull up menu, and I'm going to pull up menu, and we're going to see it in our viewfinder. Boom, there's the menu. So once we're in the menu, I'm going to zoom up here a little bit so we can see this a little more clearly. Let's go ahead and go to format the SD card. So I've clicked menu once, um, and I'm going to click the right arrow. I remember, we have our up, down, left, right. I click the right arrow. And now I'm going to click the bottom arrow until we get to what we're looking for, which is Format Media. I'm going to press the right arrow again, and then we see I'm on Media A, or I can switch, go back, or I can go to Media B. There is no Media B. There's only Media A. So I'll hit the center button, which is Set or Select. I'll select Media A to Format, and then I'm going to press the up arrow and hit Set or Select again, and that's going to execute the format after I go up, because it's asking me this so many times because it doesn't want me to accidentally delete all my footage. When you format an SD card, it deletes and formats everything off the SD card. So I'm going to hit OK, and now we can see formatting done. So now my SD card is formatted and is matched up now with this camera. The camera can properly record media to the SD card. We can flip the shut. We're good. We're good. Everything's set. We have our media formatted. We have our white balance color correction. Now all we need to do is properly frame up and focus our shot. If you want to get rid of the menu, you can just press the menu button again. Um, we can frame up our shot, make sure it looks good, and we can go ahead and press record. Again, record's over here on the little handle thing right there. So I'll press record, and we'll see recording starts. Now, we see the little red at the top of our little viewfinder here. It says record. There's a little, there's a few things here I want to note. We can see our audio levels on the bottom, and we can see where my volume's coming in and out. We can see we're set on media channel A, and we have 214 minutes left of recording. We can see our F stops. This won't make any sense to you if you're not video production. We can see our batteries at 70%. Um, and a few other things. We can see that we're recording in 1080p, uh, 20, 29. 0.97 frames per second. Um, so we're doing pretty good. Things are looking pretty good. All right, so that's what it looks like on the inside of the viewfinder. Um, on the outside, we have this little red light came on. This light is called your tally, your tally light. This light is also on the front of the camera. This indicates to our reporter, our anchor, that they are indeed live and on camera, or that the recording has started. So they're aware of that. All right, so that's the camera, front to back. We're recording. Our talent's over there. They've got their mic. They're holding it. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much more than that. We've got our light. Our light's still going, and everything's set up. Now, 
if you record it and then stop down. So we'll go ahead and stop down. The way we stop recording is by pressing the button again. When we press the button again, we can see recording at the top disappears and that our tally light turns off up here and in the front. And then we can check our recordings uh, while we're on location by coming over here and we can flip this down and we can go to thumbnail. Thumbnail will get us to our recordings. It's going to pull up our videos here. We've only recorded one video. You can use the arrow buttons to select the video and then it's going to go ahead and start playing it. That is the video that we recorded. So we can view that back. If you have headphones plugged in, you're going to hear it coming through the headphones, which is perfect because that's what you want to hear. You want to make sure that the audio sounds good and that the video looks good. Now, if this doesn't float your boat, we've got another option for a viewfinder on the top or a, again, I'm still blanking on the name for it. It's a screen. Anyway, you've got another option. I'll show you what that looks like. Here it is. Here is your electronic viewfinder. Now we can take this. We can see it's got a track on the bottom. We can slide that track right into our metal up top here. And then we'll tighten that down before it slides out. Let me get that tightened up. Did I go the wrong way? I went the wrong way. Or no, I didn't. I went the right way. All right, tighten that up. Tidy, tidy. Now we can swivel this left and right. Um, but we're not seeing anything yet because it's not plugged in yet. We have this cable now that's running down. And there's an input for this cable. This is a weird looking cable. There's an input for this cable, I believe, right here. So we can go ahead, give me a second, I'll plug that in. All right, so this is what it looks like when you get the electrical viewfinder on. It's actually really nice because <laughs> when it's not like too bright outside, you can zoom in and check your focus very easily with the electronic uh, viewfinder. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice feature for playback as well. One thing I meant to mention when we were talking about playback earlier is although the thumbnail button is here, the controls for controlling playback are up here. You have your pause, play, previous, next. Um, so when we're in our thumbnail view here, we can use these arrow keys to select. And I can select a clip and it will start uh, playing. Well, no, it won't play immediately. It's paused. You can see it's paused right at the top center there. And I can click the little play button here and then it'll start playing and we can listen to it on our headphones. I'm holding the headset to my mic on my chest. Maybe you heard that. But yeah, if you're interested in taking this with you, it's got a connector also right here in the front. Now, sometimes this can be finicky and uh, you need to make sure it's plugged in all the way. There's like you push it in, you think it doesn't go any further. And then you just push it just a bit more and it kind of clicks and then you know it really isn't all the way. As a last, last thought, if you want to take the battery off the camera, make sure you turn the camera off first. So we'll flick this little switch, the camera will start to power down, the camera will turn off. And then if you want to take these batteries out, there's this little lever here. And when you pull it, you'll see red. When you see that red, you know it's time to pull the camera or the battery towards yourself. It's the same exact way here on the LED light panels. Speaking of batteries, one thing that you should really consider checking out from the lab is one of the battery chargers. It comes with a cable and a battery charging dock. The charging dock plugs in, we have this cable here, and then once that's plugged in, this plugs into a regular wall. And all you have to do is take the battery and similar to all the other mounts, just line it up, put it in, click it, and you'll see it'll start flashing some buttons. If the red's flashing, I believe that means it's charging. If it says ready in green, that means it's done charging. Um, and you'll know. You'll know when it's done. So it's that easy. Again, highly recommend checking one of these out as well. And with that, we are done. We have effectively covered everything. Wrap-up's pretty much the exact same as taking everything out. Um, one silly tidbit is that students often collapse these little light stands down wrong. The correct answer is whichever configuration of the sliding telescoping part makes it the shortest. That's what wraps it up properly. All right. Yeah, but that's everything. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me either in the comment section or you can email me directly. Um, to my students, I'll see you in class. And to everyone else, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day.